Wow, today has been a crazy, crazy day. This is why I always say subscribe to the channel and turn your notifications on because you won't miss anything. Some days can be a lot. And you know what's funny? I was just in the video where we were talking about, hey, wonder who's going to be next. Wonder who the Ravens going to bring in next. Look at that. Ravens done answered our question. But also in that same video, I was just letting y'all know again that I really, really appreciate y'all. And there can be some days where it's, we only put out one video a day, but there can be some days where we put out four or five videos a day because stuff gets crazy. We were just saying that in the previous video and then boom, look at this. We on video number four today alone. So... My apologies for overwhelming y'all's subscription boxes. My apologies for all the videos, but we already in crazy season. So if you weren't ready for it, like me, hey, you got no choice but to just embrace it. Anyway, we done done enough talking. Kyle Vinoy, who while we were in the middle of recording the video for Melvin Gordon, for the Ravens signing Melvin Gordon, and shout out to Jeff Zrebic because he said something that made a lot of sense. Because I was wondering, like, why are they signing Melvin Gordon into the contract that they signed him to? A one-year, $3.1 million deal, even though it's worth up to $3.1 million. So it's going to be a lot of incentives in there, but still, why are they signing him to that? And I was like, oh, does this mean they're going to trade J.K. Dobbins? Is Gus Edwards hurt? What, what, what's going on? But then Jeff Zrebic said something that made a lot of sense. He said, with J.K. Dobbins having missed significant time over the past two years, it makes sense for them to bring in a Melvin Gordon, bring in a veteran running back. But at the same time, I was like, still, I don't get it. I don't understand it. But still, anyway, moving on. The Ravens, they've been looking for some help at edge, at outside linebacker, at the pass rush department. They've been looking for um, just some a nice insurance policy and whatnot uh, because there is so much unknown there at that position right now there's a lot of unknown Adafi away we waiting on him to break out David Ajabo it's a lot of unknown with him as far as being an NFL pass rusher we know what he did in college but as in the NFL is another story so we got to see what happens with him we still got Tyus Bowser so this will be his first year where he should be starting off his first year over the past couple of years where he's starting off completely healthy because you know last year it took him a little bit so um a lot of unknowns there we got some rookies too. You got Trent Simpson. Uh well Patrick Queen, that's one you know. But he's not really a pass rusher. He's an inside linebacker, off ball linebacker. Right? Yeah, hey, appreciate y'all teaching me what that means. Um, but yeah, man, so it's, it's a lot of question marks there. So the Ravens, um, they were gonna bring in Dwayne Smoot for a visit to help at that edge position. Uh, but the Jaguars say, No, 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 Ravens. No, that's our guy. So the Ravens. As they normally do, always got a backup plan. Always looking at other options, just in case. And this is a big model of mine. Hey, stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. Ravens were trying to get ready, and the Jaguars said, no, we about to get our player back. So the Ravens said, okay, that's cool. Enjoy him. So we are going to go the veteran route, and they are going to bring in Kyle Vinoy, who I think when I was recording a video, I think the notification came across my screen that they were actually signing him. But they're not signing him yet, at least. He's scheduled to visit with the Baltimore Ravens today. Today. Um, now, just looking at Kyle Vinoy, I forgot. I, you know, th This whole time, I was thinking, all right, he done played for the Patriots. And I remember he signed to the Dolphins. Uh, I, I, that seemed like that was last year when he signed with the Dolphins. But that was 2020. That was a long time ago. Well, two years ago. I mean, three years ago. I, I, I had thought he was signed with the Dolphins last year, but see, man, it, these Ravens, boy, they, they be messing up my mind, messing up my memory and all. But anyway, um, I had really, I have completely forgot that he played for the Lions originally. That was his first team was the Detroit Lions. I forgot, man. So, but looking throughout his career, um, once he got started being productive, he ain't really stop. Because he got drafted in 2014 for the Lions. Uh, he ain't have any sacks in 2014, but 2015 he had one sack. 2016, none. 2016, that's when he went to the Patriots. Uh, so he played for the Lions for three years and had one sack in those three years. Uh, but then in 2016, he uh, played for the Patriots. Oh, he, he played for them. He played for both the Lions and the Patriots in 2016. Um, and he had one sack. But in 2017, see, this is where he really started. This is so forget all the other stuff. 2017, where he really got started. 2017, he had five and a half sacks. Had 73 tackles, uh, five and a half sacks. 
2018, he had 92 tackles and three and a half sacks. 2019, hey, look, these players that the Ravens been bringing in, 2019 was their best years. It really was. When we when they were going to bring in Dwayne Smoot, we looked at his 2019, and that was the best season he ever had. Now we look at Kyle Vannoy, 2019 was the best season he ever had. Coincidence that it lines up with Lamar Jackson MVP season and these dudes getting ready to visit with the team that Lamar plays for? I don't think so. But anyway, 2019, he had 56 tackles and six and a half sacks. His highest number of sacks in his career. Uh, 2020, uh, where he played for Miami. Again, because again, I thought it was last year. But anyway, he had 69 tackles and six sacks. 2021, 66 tackles and five sacks. 2022, last year, 46 tackles and five sacks. So, going over the past four years, he's a, a five, five and a half sack kind of guy. And again, that's fine. Just like with Dwayne Smoot, that's fine. That's production. That's product. Same way with Kyle Vinoy. But he's somebody, he can rush the pass a little bit. But they also say that he could drop back as well. So he could do a little bit of the Tyus Bowser role where you can do a bit of both. And you know what the Ravens, it's all about the more you can do. The more you can do. But he gives you somebody, you know what to expect. You ex- hey, expect about five, five and a half sacks from him every year. That's what you ex- expect. That's what he's been getting. That's what he's been doing. That's what we're going to expect. But um, I, I, I would not be mad at that move. Um... It's obviously not the sexiest move in the world. It wouldn't be the sexiest move in the world. Um, but it is somebody that, that can play. So it ain't all about the sexy moves all the time. It's about those that can come in and play. And Kyle Vinoy, somebody that's been around for a while since, what, 2014? So he's been around for a while. So he obviously, he obviously knows something. Uh, because had he not known much or not even been that good, then he would have been out of there a long time ago. So shout out to Kyle Vinoy. Um, we're gonna see. We're gonna see. We're gonna see what this visit uh, leads to, if anything. I, I do think that, in my opinion, I think that the Ravens are, if they like him, they're gonna sign him like that. I think it's gonna be quick. Training camp around the corner, and the guy that you wanted to bring in for a visit before he ended up getting signed before you even had him in on a visit. I think if Ravens really like Kyle Vinoy, this thing is gonna be a no-brainer for them. So maybe even. It's 2 o'clock now when I'm recording this. It's, it just turned 2 o'clock, literally. It was 159 when I was looking at it, but now it's turned 2 o'clock. So I, I, I could see this happening by the end of the day. And may, by the latest, I say probably tomorrow, but may, maybe Sunday, but probably even tomorrow. Because, again, Ravens got to get on this thing. Training camp for the veterans It's next week. Today is the 21st. So the veterans report on the 25th, I want to say... And the 25th is Tuesday. So, yeah, they're going to have a full house next week. Oh, but then a lot of y'all are going to be able to get to go to uh, training camp, too. So, cool, man. This is uh, exciting times. Busy times with exciting times. But I appreciate y'all being part of all the busyness. I appreciate y'all being with part of all the craziness. I appreciate y'all dealing with my craziness. And I appreciate y'all listening to all, to all these thoughts that are in this head. You know, this head got some size on it, so you know, uh, it's a lot of thoughts that are in there. So we we love to express them, we love to talk about them, love to get them out, and I really appreciate y'all taking the time every single day uh, being willing to listen. So until next, whatever happens next, whatever the Ravens decide to do next, because they don't want to give nobody a break today. They just, this is what they always do, though. You know what, Raven, they, Ravens will be quiet for a while, they'll be quiet for a long time, it'll be Hush, hush, it be one okay, nothing. Then boom, 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 boom. The Ravens, every single time, we always talk about this. Ravens don't just take it easy. When they make a move, they make a move and make another move and another one and another one. And it's like, oh, relax. Well, don't relax. Do your thing, Ravens. But so yeah, but that's why we love them, right? Because they uh, yeah, they very busy. So team, keep it clean. I love y'all. Thank y'all for just everything. And on that note, like the Ravens probably won't let Calvinoy get when it comes to being in the building if they really like him, I'm out.